Hi everyone, welcome back to another video of Tiffin recipes that you could send for your kids to school, take to your office or even have it for breakfast at home. I had kept these for my kids Tiffin. Hope you would like it. Keep watching. So let's begin with a burger recipe which even vegetarians can go for. Burgers are any kids favorite and this has become my kids one of their favorites. For this you will need potatoes. Here I've taken 4 medium to large size. You may cook the potatoes in water. I have steamed it and it takes only 15 minutes. Now you may chop everything. To make it easier, I have used my food processor. Into that goes 4 garlic cloves. One small onion. I roughly chopped for easier process. Then one red capsicum, some cabbage leaves and coriander leaves. You may use any vegetables of your choice like any color capsicum, beans, corn or any such. Instead of using it as such, I cook these chopped vegetables to get rid of the raw taste. Sauteing the vegetables in butter, you may even use oil. Meanwhile, the potatoes are cooked very well. Transfer that to a heat proof bowl. You may use a masher or a fork and mash it well while it's still hot. Don't forget to check this in between. It's all done. It takes just 5 to 6 minutes. Once a potato is well mashed, add the cooked vegetables into it. Mix well. To this add a tablespoon of red chilli flakes, 1 tablespoon paprika. If you don't have it, just skip but this adds a good taste. 1 teaspoon dried basil leaves, half teaspoon oregano, salt and this is breadcrumbs of 2 bread slices. I am just transferring to a bigger bowl so that it's easy to mix. This is optional. I added feta cheese to give a good taste. You may add mozzarella or any cheese or even skip it. Mix everything very well. This is corn flour. You may even use all purpose flour. If you are a non veg, you can even use eggs. Add couple of tablespoons of corn flour and mix with water. Then you will need breadcrumbs. I have taken a half cup measurement cup for equal size. Roll it out and shape it into a burger. Tap it lightly in breadcrumbs, then the corn flour and then again in the breadcrumbs. This is to give it a thick coating. You can directly dip in the corn flour and then in the breadcrumbs. And it's ready. I have prepared 4 and I'll be keeping this in the fridge until tomorrow morning. The rest I stored in the freezer in an airtight container and it stays good for at least 3 weeks. In the morning, take out from the fridge. Fry in oil on medium flame until golden brown on both sides. Now if your burgers are in the freezer, make sure you keep it in the fridge the previous night and next morning you can fry those. Choose your favorite spreads or salads to fill in. I added what my kids love. And there you go with a delicious veg burger. Next is soya kebab wraps, that's equally tasty as any meat kebabs. So for this you need soya chunks, I took around 3 cups. Add hot water to it and keep it covered for 30 minutes. Then later, 
squeeze out all the water from the soya chunks. You may use a blender, I use my food processor. Add the soya chunks into it and blend well. Blend till it becomes a keema consistency. Add that to a mixing bowl. Now into the food processor again. Add 4 to 5 cloves of garlic, 4 to 5 green chilies, 1 large spring onion, then a handful of coriander leaves and a handful of parsley. You may skip if you don't have but it adds good taste. Blend for a few seconds. Add the soya into the food processor and blend again till everything is well blended together. So this is how you should get it. To that add one and a half tablespoon of paprika. Now paprika adds good taste to kebabs and burgers. So if you can find it in the shops, do buy it. Then half to three four teaspoon turmeric powder, half tablespoon Kashmiri red chilli powder, salt, adding half cup basin, half cup rice flour and half cup corn flour. Now I have tried with basin and all-purpose flour and the taste is better when you use all-purpose flour but even basin is not that bad at all so you can choose any of your choice. Adding just a little oil to mix well. Now you can roll it onto a skewer and then grill them. Just dip your hand in water and roll. I have rolled it as such without the skewers. I kept these in the fridge overnight. You can even store in the freezer for 3 weeks. To make it easy, I prepared the dough for the chapati the previous night. In the morning, I took out these from the fridge. Firstly prepared all the chapatis. Then deep fried the kebabs. You have to fry them on low medium flame because it has to cook inside. If you keep on high flame, it will turn brown quickly and won't cook inside. So make sure the flame is low medium and cook till it's golden brown. Onto a chapati or paratha or you can even use a tortilla. Use your favorite spread. I spread a spoon of hummus and mayonnaise. Then place lettuce and some onions. Place two kebabs and it's a wrap. And it's ready to pack. Next is banana puttu, a traditional recipe from Kerala. So for this you will need puttu flour, I took 2 cups flour, added some salt and then goes 2 cups water that's at room temperature. You can prepare the puttu from leftover rice that I had shown in one of my videos, I shall share the link below. Mix and keep aside for some time. Now this is ripe plantains, the nendra banana. I took 2 large and chopped it into small pieces. Into a heated vessel or a clay pot, add a tablespoon of ghee. Then add the chopped plantains and mix for 5 to 6 minutes. Then goes grated coconut. I added 1 cup totally, adding half cup at a time. You may add more or less but I guess 1 cup is perfect. For sweetness, I added jaggery. You may add sugar. You can even add a pinch of cardamom powder. My kids doesn't like the flavor so I skipped it. And I have even seen some people adding soaked poha, that's a flattened rice and even one egg. I don't like the egg smell so I kept this as simple as possible. The puttu flour has soaked very well and an extra step to make soft puttu is adding the flour in batches into a blender and pulse few times.
you may not be able to see the difference in video but when you try yourself you can feel the flaw has gone fluffier my husband tasted the banana mix and he wanted it more sweet so i added quarter cup of brown sugar and a pinch of salt to balance out this is the putter maker firstly add grated coconut at the bottom then 2 heaped spoons of the flour then add the sweet banana 2 spoons and then repeat add grated coconut at the top and place it on boiling water when you see the steam coming keep it as such for 2 3 minutes more and then it's ready to take out this is a very delicious breakfast my kids loved it i'm sure your kids and your family would love it too Next is my favorite breakfast and when there is sambar my kids love it too. It's ven pongal. I have a lot of viewers from Tamil Nadu. I don't know if this is your authentic recipe but this is how I make. Do comment below if I need any corrections. You can prepare sambar the previous night. I made it quick and fresh in the morning. That's half cup washed tur dal, added that into a pressure cooker along with water and cooked for one whistle. Now that's tamarind adding hot water to get the pulp out of it. Now that's 1 cup rice. I use jeeraga shala rice. You can use basmati if you want. And 1/2 cup split moong dal. Roast on medium flame for 5 to 6 minutes. Now wash and drain the excess water. These are the only vegetables that I had to add to the sambar. Into the tamarind pulp, add one and a half tablespoon of sambar powder and mix. Into the dal, add the vegetables and the tamarind mix. Then add some salt. and cook for 3 to 4 whistles on medium flame into another pressure cooker add 1 or 2 tablespoons of ghee quarter teaspoon hing or asafoetida add 1 tablespoon chopped ginger and 2 split green chilies mix for a minute and add the drained dal and rice mix mix for few seconds and add 5 cups of hot water add salt cover and cook for 4 whistles on medium flame instead of adding whole black pepper corns i crush them lightly in a mortar and pestle into a pot add a tablespoon of ghee and roast a handful of cashews keep the cashews aside into the same ghee add 1 teaspoon cumin seeds and then the crushed black pepper mix for few seconds and add curry leaves then goes in the cooked rice and dal mix thoroughly check salt and add if needed finally add the roasted cashews now for tempering the sambar heat coconut oil splutter a teaspoon of mustard seeds then goes curry leaves and dried red chilies add half to 1 teaspoon sambar powder and roast it for few seconds and then add to the sambar add hot water if needed let it boil for 2 minutes and it's ready to go this is such a great combination for a filling breakfast 
and that's for today's tiffin recipes hope you liked it do try it out for your family and for yourself share your feedback i'll see you with another video until then take care bye bye